Hello there, you're watching the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages as they arrive. And it's time to see what's making the headlines with the Daily Mirror's associate editor, Kevin Maguire, and the Telegraph's assistant comment editor, Olivia Utley. They're with us now until midnight. Thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, let's take a look at some of those stories that are on the front of those pages. And the Telegraph understands that plans for a £250 million water plant that's supposed to ease the burden of hosepipe bans has been taken out of service. While the Star hears that water companies are encouraging people to report their neighbours for flouting hosepipe bans. That's also the lead story for the Metro. While the Times reports that millions of people could be affected by the upcoming bans. Well, according to the Express, inflation could hit 15% by next year, with gas bills substantially to blame. The Mail has the Attorney General, Suella Braverman, again pledging to curb so-called wokeism. And the Mirror features the swimmer Adam Peaty calling on the government to invest more in children's sports facilities, especially following the Lionesses' victory at Euro 2022. The Financial Times has a story concerning the relationship between the holding company SoftBank and the e-commerce conglomerate Alibaba. And The Guardian carries an investigation which has found that the far-right ecosystem is targeting children in the UK in an attempt to radicalise them online. While The Sun reports that according to Rebecca Vardy, her husband, the footballer Jamie Vardy, received death threats while her court battle was ongoing. And a reminder that by scanning the QR code on your screen right now, and you'll see it during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's papers and look at them in a bit more detail while you watch with us. Well, we are joined this evening by Kevin Maguire and Olivia Utley to take us through. Got quite a good selection tonight. Um, Kevin, let's start with you first of all. Uh, a big story tonight, uh, Taiwan and what is happening there. We've seen this military build-up around the island. Of course, this coming in light of Nancy Pelosi's whistle-stop visit there. Uh, a short visit, uh, not a visit sanctioned by the, the US government, but she is the most senior American politician to visit in a quarter of a century. No, absolutely, and it's stirred up a hornet's nest and the, the Chinese are incredibly belligerent and uh, threatening all sorts of uh, retaliations. The Guardian focuses on the fears that... Uh, there will be live firing exercises around Taiwan. Of course, China is a much much bigger state than uh, than Taiwan it's, uh, itself, and there could be it could be a blockade. Uh, it's it was was the visit wise at this time, or was it was it unwise? Uh, because it's the position in the U.S., of course, is uh, it represents one China doesn't have uh, an embassy in Taiwan, but at the same time, it sells the Taiwanese uh, arms. And it's clearly a huge issue for the Chinese, although uh, I would say if if Beijing wishes to woo the Taiwanese, I'm not sure it's going around the right way about it when it seems to be uh, all, all threats. But, of course, it goes back to what was effectively a partition of China in 1949 when the nationalist Kian Shek lost the civil war, fled to Taiwan, uh, Chairman Mao, the communists, won on the mainland, and you know, Beijing looks like it uh, is, is going to step up its campaign to reunify uh, China. But again, I, I just think it's going, to, going about it in a very, uh, very um, positive way. And the example of Hong Kong, which, of course, had to go back because it was a British colony, it had been seized by, by Britain in the past, went back. The erosion of freedoms there is not going to encourage the Taiwanese to want to embrace the mainland. Mm. And, Olivia, a lot of people will look at this and say, well, you know, it's an awfully long way away, it doesn't really concern me, but... but... Any destabilisation in that region is, of course, a great cause for concern, isn't it? Well, massively, and this looks like ta Taiwan is on the verge of being completely blockaded. Um, Taiwanese people could find it difficult to get hold of food, supplies, etc. Um, that's pretty scary. Um, and we did know, you know, when when we saw um, Putin invade Ukraine, there were there were it was said that it would embolden other dictators to to do something similar. And obviously, the these tensions have been bubbling for a while now. But it now looks quite likely that China will mount a, a full scale invasion even of 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 Taiwan um soon and i think nancy pelosi's visit was 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 really very misguided of, of course she should be able to visit taiwan of course most you know right thinking people believe that taiwan should should have self determination be its own separate state but the truth is that 
that the US has maintained this position of, of, of careful ambiguity for years now. And that's very important diplomacy. And Nancy Pelosi just seemed to want to look good on the world stage, do a bit of virtue signaling and treat it a bit like a kind of catwalk for herself. It's sort of freelance diplomacy. Um, and I think that it's the Taiwanese people who are going to suffer as a result of that. We shall see. Um, thank you both very much for that. Uh, let's move on to another really big story, which we've, of course, been covering for the last few days uh, and which we've had developments on this evening, and, and that's the, the story of Archie Battersby and, and the fight for his parents to, to keep his life support system going. Uh, Olivia, t tonight we, we've heard that, that another legal bid has failed. The hospital have said to, to his parents, look, you know, if we don't hear anything different from 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, it looks like from 11 that we will start to to progress the, the turning off of, of his life-saving equipment. It, it's heartbreaking, isn't it? And any parent will watch what's happening and your heart goes out to, to these parents. But it does seem that they have reached the end of the road, doesn't it, in terms of where they can go legally? Yeah, it does look like they have. And it really is just such a horrible story. And when and when you see those interviews with his mother, who who genuinely believes that that Archie, there is life left in Archie and that one day he might recover. Um, and the, the courts are telling her and all the medical evidence, too, seems to be telling her that that that's just not the case. But it must be just Un indescribably awful to to feel as she clearly does that that it's her family against the whole legal system and she's taken it as far as she can possibly go at every single stage that family's love for their son is is just incredible to to witness really but it, it looks that they're now talking about transferring Archie to, to hospice care they're going to do it tomorrow so his father can be by his side um it's just a really tragic tragic story and it's it's sad isn't it Kevin I mean the the, the actual circumstances of this case you know, aside that that they felt that that they have to take this action, that that perhaps those last few days that they could have spent with Archie, that they've they've spent embarking on this legal challenge. Yeah, just decisions are taken in the uh, the NHS and the, the healthcare system to switch off life support machines probably every day, and they're done in consultation with families, and there's often agreement. I was on the periphery of a, a decision like that once, and uh, and it is it's heartbreaking, and your heart goes out to Holly Dance and uh, Paul uh, Battersby, the, the the dad, uh, both devout Christians. Uh, they believe their you know, their, their, their son is better than all medical experts say he is, and the failure to get a hearing at the European Court on Human Rights, which said it wouldn't interfere because it believes the the law has, has been followed correctly, is a, is a big blow to them. And uh, Holly, the mother, is, is now talking about trying to get a Charlie's, uh, sorry, an Archie's law to help uh, help other family. But the, the fact is, he's dead. He's, he's just he's dead. He's just being kept in some sort of condition with the uh, with the with the mechanical ventilator. Um, and the hospital say so even trying to move them to a hospice would uh, would uh, result in a deterioration. So it's she's she's accepts it's the end, but you, you you can understand her age. You can you might even feel it yourself if you were a parent that way. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, the decisions have to be taken for what are considered to be the best interests of. Uh, of the patient, in this case, a, a child, and something unspoken but is always in the background is the strain on the nurses and the doctors tending somebody who is effectively dead but is just being kept going in some way artificially, uh, and also the strain on uh, NHS resources. If um, somebody's been in, in, in intensive care uh, treated like that for four months but they're, they're dead, how long do you... How long do you go on? And it means somebody else can't be receiving receiving treatment. It's 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 sad. It's tragic, and there's no easy answer at all to this. No. But you, your heart goes out to the yeah, parents. No, no, no answers at all whatsoever. Um, yeah. Um, let's move on to, to something uh, well, slightly lighter, perhaps, but but actually not not that light and quite significant for a lot of people. Uh, we're all seeing yellow lawns everywhere, yellow parks everywhere. Uh, the country's really suffering because of the hot weather. Uh, but there's, the Daily Telegraph's got a story about a, a water plant that was designed especially to, to kick into action when this sort of thing happens, um, but it's been secretly mothballed. Kevin, tell us more. 
Yeah, Thames Water, 250 million uh, desalination plant. The Telegraph says it was opened by Prince Philip in 2010, but it isn't operating now. And it could have pr produced uh, fresh water from Beckton in east of London, the old uh, docks area, for 400,000 uh, homes, according to the Telegraph. Uh, of course, in a, one way, that's only a drop in the ocean, <laughs> should we say, when there's 15 million homes in Thames, Thames Water uh, alone, whereby it looks like we're going to be told not to wash our cars, or I never do mine. Uh, or water our lawns. I thought you just had a bike, one. Kevin. You know, yeah. I, I've used my bike, actually. <laughs> I wonder if you could watch a bike. I like, you probably need clarification on that, Jane, whether you're, you're allowed to go out with a sponge and clean your bike. <laughs> but uh, but you, you would think if they've spent all this money on this plant, why isn't it Why isn't it well, operating? If it could turn seawater into fresh water. Well, why exactly. What, why Why isn't it operating, <laughs> Olivia? You're, you know, it, it's your paper that have got this great story. What What's going on here? Well, it's not exactly clear. There's an editorial on it as well. And it turns out that there are these plants operating perfectly effectively throughout um, most of the world. But somehow mismanagement has, has left this one in a state where it's about to be mothballed. And from, from the story, it, it sounds very much as though as though Thames water is, is just very badly managed. And of course, we have had the driest July um, for a very long time. Um, and we're set for a very dry August as well. So the conditions are bad. But the truth is that Thames Water loses a lot of water every year to leaks and doesn't do enough to fix them quickly and at the same time is, is profiting quite a lot. So I don't think Thames Water is in a particularly good state. And if it's not able to run this desalination plant, which, you know, as we've heard, cost uh, 250 million in 2010 and has barely ever been used. It's not it's not clear it was it's ever been in, in full in full use in those 11 years. Um, it's. It's quite bad. So it, both Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak, Liz Truss in, in, is quoted in, in the Telegraph uh, mm. tomorrow as, as saying that she's going to look into this properly. But it's, it feels like another reason why I can't believe how long this leadership contest is dragging out for. You know, issues like this are exactly what the prime minister should be tackling head on right now. Um, in another month's time, this drought will probably be it, over. It'll have rained. Uh, so um, but it briefly brings us on to, well, here's hoping. Just before we take a break, uh, the Daily Star and the Metro both covering a linked story to this, which is that there's going to be um, a hotline to grass up your neighbours. That's the Metro's take on it. But the Daily Star uh, have gone for this glorious image. This, is, of course, is what all grannies look like. Uh, spot those uh, saggy <laughs> pop socks, rollers in the hair. Um, yeah, this is what all of us who are watering our lawns look like of an evening. Uh, grass of a granny is the star's take on that. Uh, spy on neighbours over hose pipe ban. Uh, right, we're going to take a short break. Uh, but coming up uh, after the break, uh, could inflation hit 15% by the next year? The Express seems to think so. Uh, we'll discuss that next. Welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me now, Kevin Maguire and Olivia Utley are taking us through uh, the front pages and some of the things in beside, insides as well. Um, Kevin, let's go to the Express now. Um, this is about inflation potentially going up to as high as 15 percent, according to uh, this is the Resolution Foundation today, wasn't it? Uh, yep. Giving this forecast. It's a bit terrifying. It, absolutely. A think tank that focuses on low and middle income families and 15 percent inflation. It's up to 9.4 percent already on the consumer price index, uh, more than 11 percent on the retail price index, which wider includes some housing costs. Uh, poorer people are, are, are facing around 12 percent already because they spend a higher proportion of their money on food and energy, which are driving this big rise. And you know, fuel bills, I mean, that is absolutely horrific. And tomorrow we have the Bank of England possibly putting up uh, interest rates by half a percent, where the cure for high inflation, if uh, the cost of borrowing and mortgages go, goes up and that starts eating into family incomes, well, that can be just as, as painful uh, uh, as inflation itself, which would be intended to be brought down, but it's a terrible position. And why is the UK economy in, in, this, in this state? Well, you could certainly point to Brexit, you could point to COVID, you could point to Putin's invasion of Ukraine, but there's also, we've had 12 years of very, very low growth, low uh, productivity, and it's all coming home now, and people are really, really suffering. 
Mm. Uh, very, very briefly, Olivia, be before we go this half, the Mirror's front page. Uh, this is about Adam Peaty, uh, who's really cross about the uh, lack of investment in sports facilities. And, of course, we're thinking about the Lionesses win. They've petitioning both uh, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak to make sure that all girls have access to football. Um, do we think that something positive is going to come out of this, that, that we are going to see children getting better facilities? Oh, yeah, I think 100%. And you've got the drive there as well. And you're already seeing girls. I've been seeing girls out in London dressed in football kits, like, for the first time I can remember. So I think that a lot of positive will come out of this. And I think the sports facilities will definitely be a, be a very good, good uh, innovation.